The pandemic has tens of millions of Americans working from home. So what's the impact on the commercial real estate market? We'll hear from the vice chairman of one of the largest commercial real estate companies on the planet next on The Jeff Crilly Show. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Okay, uh, let's imagine that you are working from home right now. You have to have some sympathy for your landlord because your landlord has a lot of tenants who are also working from home. Let's talk about commercial real estate with Herman Bulls. He is a vice chairman of JLL, one of the largest real estate companies on the planet. Herman, thank you for joining us. Great to be here, Jeff. Well, this has got to be surreal for you as well. Uh, tell us about the very early days of the pandemic. Uh, being in commercial real estate, did you have a little bit of a freak out moment? Well, you're, you're certainly concerned because we obviously provide services both to our clients and to tenants in terms of getting them to a place where they can live, work, play and learn. And if you're, you know, the very early days, I think, Jeff, not many of us knew the extent that this was going to go. So you were certainly thinking about the first thing, and I, I, I happen to serve on uh, corporate boards as well. And one of the first thing you think of is what, the safety of your people. So we're certainly thinking about that. And we actually have an office in Wuhan, China. So we were certainly aware of what was going on, but during the early phase, we certainly had no idea it was gonna turn into what it did. And so what happened with your own employees? Uh, I guess you guys all started working from home as well, right? Yes, we did. Uh, we basically uh, had the ability, and it's so great for organizations to have the infrastructure from a technology perspective. You always know something is going to happen. You're looking for those black swan events uh, as, a, as a senior manager, as a board member, as a CEO, but you never know when they are going to come. And I can't say we actually had this one figured out, but we immediately um, had uh, offices closed and we had uh, information available through our technology process. But obviously, as one of the largest facilities managers around the world, we obviously had some people that still had to go to work, uh, but we didn't make anybody go. We certainly provide as much safety and uh, uh, you know assistance as we could to those individuals. But, you know, some of the buildings still had to go. If you're a bank, for example, we're the Bank of America is a big client of ours. You know, those those uh, computer centers got to they got to turn 24 hours a day. So somebody's got to be there making that happen. Yes. And, and keeping not just your employees uh, healthy and happy, but your your tenants. Uh, it's a it's a big job. We found a video that you guys produced not long ago, and we want to roll that right now. After 13 weeks of working from home, it's certainly a nice uh, and, and pleasant feeling to be able to come back into the office. It's different seeing people. Uh, we're at lower capacities right now, and certainly people are, are taking precautions as we need to be with our face coverings and so forth, with health and safety at the top of the list. But even that being said, uh, it is great to be back to, to see our colleagues and to begin to collaborate together. And having the opportunity to connect with colleagues um, face to face, it, it just felt really, really good. I mean, there really is no um, replacement for that. It's so nice to be able to chat and collaborate and there's things that just come up that aren't necessarily in your agenda. Seeing friends, seeing, seeing colleagues, seeing people, right? And, and having that sense of normalcy and catching up. Um, in a real meaningful people way. It's just more of this stuff, right? I mean, I, we were joking a little bit before, right? I got my first haircut last week, put on real shoes today. 
for the first time in about two months. Those are little things, but they're, they're important. They're symbolic, but they're also just a really important in how uh, we feel about ourselves and how uh, we go about our day to day. The one thing that I've learned from my time here at JLL, um, and it's a tribute to the culture that has been cultivated over many years, is our ability to connect, collaborate, innovate, and solve some of our clients' toughest problems. The new workspace still allows for that same creativity, that same ability to connect and collaborate to continue to win. We are, as a company that is you know, helping our clients think about this, also thinking about um, the flexibility needed in talking to our teams in terms of coming back. Safety and the care of our employees um, is our number one priority. Our corporate real estate team and our facility management team have done a magnificent job in working with our landlords across the country as well as preparing our space, implementing social distancing guidelines, uh, ensuring that we have the appropriate flow within the space uh, so that people are safe uh, and, and so that we can get back to, to normal in our offices. As we thought about what would the new normal look like and what kind of spaces that we needed to create to drive innovation and creativity. One of the things we wanted to do was make sure that when we designed the new workspace uh, going forward, that it would be a workplace that actually enables what makes us strong, um, what enables um, the strong culture that we have built up over time. There was a plan that we had on how re-entry would look and coming back today, it worked. It, it, feels, it feels really good to be back here. Getting back in the office is just another step towards what we do best. I think through this crisis, we've shown our clients um, what we're made of, you know, what our expertise, what, what we bring to the table. So, so impressive on how you guys have navigated this pandemic so far. Let's talk more about you, Herman. I can see in the background, uh, the, your military uh, career is a big part of your life. Uh, how did it all begin for you? Well, I was very fortunate uh, uh, from Florence, Alabama. And as you know, uh, you're in Texas, so Friday Night Lights is a big thing out there, as it was in Alabama. And I was an athlete, and I happened to also be, um, you know, pretty good student, president of my student council. And I had the privilege of being recruited by all of the service academies. And you're sitting there as a 17-year-old Jeff, and people are telling you how great you're going to be. But in the end, you go to bed at night, and you're really a little, you know, weary, is this going to be? what people say it's going to be. However, looking at West Point and looking at the challenges, uh, I decided to take that challenge. And I can tell you, as I walked around campus and you're seeing statues of Eisenhower and uh, Patton and MacArthur, you're going, you know, am I really here? So that was it. And then uh, of course I had a total of a 30 year army career, 11 of those on active duty, which included some pretty cool assignments. Met my wife in the army, at my first assignment at Fort Dix. So that was, uh, certainly cool. And uh, two of my sons also had the opportunity to go to West Point. I taught at West Point uh, full time, taught finance and economics for three years. And after I left the active duty, I actually taught there for an additional 18 years. So the military, they were very, very good for me. Had the opportunity to go back to uh, business school at Harvard. Uh, they sponsored me there to go back and teach. So I have nothing but positive thoughts about the military. And there's so much discipline that you learn. How, how did that help shape your career? Well, I think, you know, I go back and that's why one of the reasons I think Title 10 is so important uh, with the athletics and making sure that women, I have a granddaughter now, so I'm certainly more sensitive to that. But I think it starts with the athletics, having the opportunity to compete and win. And of course, being a quarterback, you're expected to uh, kind of know everybody's position and be in charge. And then going to West Point, which is the best leadership academy, I think, in the world, uh, having that opportunity to be tested. And the leader you learn uh, at West Point, they teach you, you're a big man on campus, but that plebe year, we're going to break you down and you're going to have to see what it is to not be the big person on campus because you're going to be leading people one day and you need to know how they feel perhaps to be at the bottom of that totem pole. Yes. If I can, let's transition to diversity and inclusion in the workplace. I know that's a big topic for you. Uh, and you were asked recently to be in a Dallas Business Journal article talking about that. Uh, how important is that in commercial real estate? Well, it's very, very important. One of the things that you know I'm uh, helping my partners and colleagues understand is, Jeff, if you think about it, in 2035, by some estimates, 
the majority, current majority in the United States is going to be the majority, the minority. So as a board member, as a senior executive, what do you need to do there? I'm going to use another sports analogy. Okay. Wayne Gretzky says what? Skate to where the puck is going to be. So here we are now in uh, 2020 with the demographic changes going on, you're going to be in a war for talent, meaning you've got to hire people. You're going to be in a war for customers, meaning that you're going to have to secure people. And as women and minorities, particularly African-American, Hispanics, make more leadway, they are going to be the consumers and they're going to be the decision makers that are going to make decisions in terms of how companies are going to be successful going forward. So with that, it's not, I tell people, diversity is not, from a business perspective, a social issue. It is a business issue for the reasons that I said earlier. Yes, and you told me something profound right before we went on the air about, you know, check out your LinkedIn and see who your friends are. I, will you repeat that for the viewer? Yeah, well, well, you know, the, the, the whole concept that is very important for people to understand now is unconscious bias. I don't think many people get up in the morning and say, I am going to be prejudiced today, I'm going to do this. The unconscious part of it is that you don't know that you don't know. So what I've been doing lately, I thought about this about a week ago, I've been asked to do quite a few speeches uh, after the Floyd incident and the racism pandemic came about. And I was just sitting there thinking, uh, as I was looking at my own social media, is a good exercise for people to do is look at your social media for your professional, right? LinkedIn is the big one. And for your social, uh, probably Facebook. And if you look on there and see how many people that are in your network are not really like you. And I'm happy to say that I have a very, very balanced uh, group that I, you know, from high school, being in the military, uh, Army, West Point, Harvard, and maintaining those relationships, because for your young listeners out there, I cannot tell you how important those relationships are. But for those that aren't learned, it's a great introspective way to say, am I really getting exposure to new ideas and new people? Wow. Herman, we're out of time for this segment. We're going to end by putting up your website so everybody can can uh, tune in and, and, and catch up with JLL and all the wonderful things you guys are doing. I sure appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff. You bet. And that's it for now. We'll see you next time.